exclusive, security at the State Department's Benghazi compound was so dire that another contractor was brought in to clean up the mess just two weeks before the 2012 terror attack, and was later pressured to keep quiet by a government bureaucrat under then-Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, according to two men from the American security company. Brad Owens and Jerry Torres, of Torres Advanced Enterprise Solutions say they faced pressure to stay silent and get on the same page with the State Department with regard to the security lapses that led to the deaths of four Americans. They spoke exclusively with Fox News for Tucker Carlson tonight, revealing new information that undermines the State Department's account of the 2012 terror attack in Benghazi, where Islamic militants launched a 13-hour assault from September 11 to 12 that killed U.S. Ambassador Chris Stevens. Foreign Service Officer Sean Smith and former Navy SEALs Ty Woods and Glenn Doherty. Taurus Advanced Enterprise Solutions provide security for you. S. Embassy and consulate personnel around the world in some of the most dangerous locations spanning Africa, the Middle East, and South America, according to the firm. Jerry Torres remains haunted by the fact specific bureaucrats and policies remain in the State Department after the Benghazi attack despite the change in administrations. A U.S. ambassador is dead and nobody is held accountable for it. And three guys, all died trying to defend him, said Torres, the company's CEO and a former Green Beret. Asked if there was a specific effort by a senior State Department contracting officer to silence them, Torres said, absolutely, absolutely. Owens, a former Army intelligence officer, echoed his colleague, saying those who made the poor choices that actually, I would say, we're more responsible for the Benghazi attacks than anyone else, they're still in the same positions, making security choices for our embassies overseas now. In 2012, Owens was the American company's point man in Libya with extensive experience in the region. After the death of Libyan dictator Muammar Gaddafi in the fall of 2011, Owens stressed to Fox News it was well known that Islamic radicals including al-Qaeda tied militias were pouring into the region and security had deteriorated considerably. Based on documents reviewed by Fox News, Torres Advanced Enterprise Solutions bid on the Benghazi compound security contract in the spring of 2012. But the State Department awarded the deal to a UK-based operation called the Blue Mountain Group. Owens who had personally visited the Benghazi compound to assess security, was shocked. Blue Mountain UK is a teeny, tiny, little security company registered in Wales that had never had a diplomatic security contract, had never done any high-threat contracts anywhere else in the world that we've been able to find, much less in high-threat areas for the US government. They had a few guys on the ground, he said. According to Torres, the Blue Mountain Group came in 4% lower than their bid, and they challenged the decision, claiming the American company should have been preferred over the foreign one. Torres said State Department contracting officer Jim Visentainer responded that the State Department had the latitude to apply that preference or not. And there was more. The Blue Mountain Group hired guards through another company who were not armed. Problems soon arose. One month before the attack, in August 2012, with the Blue Mountain Group still in charge of compound security, Ambassador Stevens and his team alerted the State Department via diplomatic cable that radical Islamic groups were everywhere and that the temporary mission compound could not withstand a coordinated attack. The classified cable was first reported by Fox News. By August. 31, 2012, the situation had deteriorated to the point that Owens and Torres said the State Department asked them to intervene as Owens put it, an admission of the mistake of choosing the wrong company. They came back to us and said, can you guys come in and take over security? Owens said. So we were ready. But Torres emphasized that time was against them, saying it would have taken two to three weeks to get set up. Twelve days later, the ambassador was killed. Torres learned of the attacks by watching television. He called the circumstances leading up to the tragedy bad decision-making from top to bottom. There was nothing we could have done about it. If we'd had one month warning, who knows what might have happened, Owens said. In the chaotic days following that attack, the Obama White House blamed the attacks on an anti-Islam video and demonstration which was not accurate. As a former Green Beret, Torres was stunned. Coming from a military background, 
I would expect the administration to tell the truth. So I bought into it for a minute. But I didn't believe it in the back of my mind. He said they later figured out the vi.